Hey there, do-it-yourself technician. Today, we're gonna to teach you about your home network, IP addresses, and logging into your router to check its configuration. And if you stick around to the end, you'll also get the opportunity to download this little booklet that you can print out and store all of your vital internet information. To learn your way around a network, configure your router, or make any network changes, you need to know a little bit about IP addresses. Not too much, otherwise this will turn out to be a four hour episode. Just the basics. An IP address is a number assigned to a device connected to the network. You've probably seen them before. Four sets of numbers separated by a full stop and properly known as a dotted quad. My phone has an IP address, which is currently 192.168.0.80. Even my watch has one which is 192.168.0.82. My iPad has one. My laptop often has two, as it has both a wireless connection and a wired connection when it's plugged in at my desk. There are two main groups of IP addresses, local or non-routable addresses and routable addresses. Local addresses are the ones that are used in homes and most small businesses. They're only useful for connecting devices on the local network. If you're connecting to other devices, like maybe a network printer on your local network, it's all done using local IP addresses. To get to the internet, they have to pass through something called a router or a gateway. In my case, that is my Optus router. Its job is in the name. It routes anything requiring internet access out from my local network and on to the internet and allows responses to those requests back in. It has two IP addresses, one on the local network, 192.168.0.1, and one on the internet side, which is usually something like 175.32.3.117. The external address is something we rarely care about, but if you need it, you can find it easily by going to whatismyip.com, and you'll get a screen that looks like this with your full IP address on it. The local address of your router is often the thing that you need to find the most because you will need this to make any changes to it. There's a couple of different ways to find it. If you look on the router itself, you'll often find a sticker that looks a bit like this, which has not only the IP address of the router, but also the username and password that you'll need to log into it. This sticker could be on the back or the bottom of the router, or may even be in a little card that was in the box that came with it. The second way to find the gateway or router address is from one of the devices that is connected to it. On my iPhone, I can go into the settings menu and then click Wi-Fi over on the left. And then beside the Wi-Fi name on the right is a little information I. I can tap on that and scroll down and find the router address. On a Windows 10 machine, you can click on the networking icon down in the system tray on the bottom right, and then click network and internet settings. You may need to click the status button on the left and then the properties button underneath the network name. From there, you can scroll down and find the IPv4 DNS server, which is almost certainly also your router's IP. If you bring up a command line, you can also find the details by typing ipconfig forward slash all and it will show you the information looking like this. Now that we have that address, we can put it straight into our web browser and connect to the configuration page of our router. My router gives quite a lot of information even on the login page before you log in. I have a replica of the LEDs of the front panel of the router showing me a bunch of connectivity information at a glance. In my case, it shows the power is on, the DSL is off as I'm connected to an NBN network, the WAN connection is my NBN connection, and that's lit up. And the internet connection is lit up. Wi-Fi is on, and there is a phone connection available. Not that I use a landline. Down the bottom, it shows the connection status with the two Wi-Fi networks, one running on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, and another on the 5 gigahertz spectrum. And it tells me that my internet connection is a fiber slash cable internet. In this case, fiber to the curb. You can see more explanation about that in the episode above. To log in, you'll need the username and password for the router. As I said earlier, many of these will have this printed on a label on the back or the bottom of the router. But if it doesn't, you can often find the default username or password by typing the model name of the router and default password into Google and seeing what you can find. They're usually not very complicated and passwords are usually things like admin 
or password. It's not meant to be secure, it's meant to be easy. If you've changed it from the default, then hopefully either you know what it is or you have that information recorded somewhere. I've actually got a good solution for that in a minute too. Once you log into the router, you'll get a configuration page that may look something vaguely like this, or this, or this. And there's lots of information here that you can look at and change. But be warned, changing some of these things can lock you out of your internet connection and may require you to reset your modem back to defaults and possibly contact your internet service provider to get you reconnected. Next week, we'll go through some of the changes you can safely make. Personalize your local network and change the name that your wireless broadcasts with. A couple of notes. In this episode, the network addresses I've been talking about are standard IPv4 network addresses, the dotted quads. There is a new standard that allows for many, many more connections, and it's called IPv6. Who knows what happened to v5? Whilst it does allow for a lot more addresses, it's not something we've needed in most cases just yet. Certainly not in your average home. A normal router with a standard configuration will happily handle 256 different devices connected to it. That's probably more than enough for most houses and small businesses. I'm only mentioning it because you might see an IPv6 network address listed in some places and it's much longer than the standard dotted quad. In fact, it's eight groups of up to four numbers and looks something like this. And I believe gives us the option to have more IP addresses than there are atoms in the universe. So that's probably enough for now. Secondly, I'm making available this little booklet that you can download and store all of the information about your internet connection in. It has spaces for your internet provider details, even account number, the IP address of your router, as well as the username and password, and also your wireless name and password, and any notes that you may need. Quite a little handy resource. Now, I know we're told all the time not to write down passwords. That's great in theory, but if you're one of the many, many people that I've come across that just doesn't care enough to keep this information stuck in your head, I believe the best thing to do is write it down and then store that somewhere secure. I mean, realistically, the details are mostly stuck on a sticker on the modem, so anyone who wants to can find that and find that information. It's not really secure. You can follow the link above to join our mailing list and you'll get sent a link to download that form. So you can print it out, put your information in it and store it somewhere safe. The other option, of course, is to have a look at our episode that we did on LastPass, which is a great way to store all of those usernames and passwords so that you won't have a problem forgetting them. Question of the day. Can you now connect to your local router? And can you log into it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this episode useful, give me a thumbs up. It really helps. Thank you. The Tech Doctor Network exists to help you become your own technician, to learn about your technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and repair it if it breaks. There's some older episodes you may not have seen before here and here. And if you click on the logo down here, you can subscribe to the channel and click the bell so that you never miss another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.